I'm Dr. Rebecca Bernard. Thank you for joining me in a discussion of overcoming barriers to physician wellness programs. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time using the contact information listed below. Why are we talking about physician wellness? The studies are clear that up to 50% of all physicians are reporting burnout, which is emotional and physical exhaustion, depersonalization, and a lack of feeling that what they're doing matters. This burnout is leading to depression in many physicians, and up to 50% of all doctors report making active plans to leave the practice of medicine. Most concerningly, we're seeing an increased risk of physician suicide with an estimate of 400 doctors per year taking their own lives. In Collier County and Lee County, several years ago, we happened to lose physicians in both counties to suicide, and that really created a major impetus on our counties to do something to help physicians so that we don't lose any more doctors from our community. We decided to start focusing on creating a physician wellness program, and I'd like to share with you some of the strategies that we've done and some of the barriers that we've overcome. When we considered what interventions we should offer to our members, we looked at the evidence. And right now, there's not a huge amount of evidence as far as what interventions are the most beneficial because the data is still evolving. But there is an overview, and that is available at the CHARM Annotated Bibliography. And this is a listing of evidence-based interventions that have been evaluated for medical students, residents, and physicians. And these are broken down into different types of interventions from physical health and emotional health interventions, facilitated group interventions, active self-improvement, and organizational transformation. When we evaluated what different interventions were most likely to be effective, um, we realized that organizational transformation is the most effective form of reducing burnout. However, we also recognize that organizational transformation is probably the most difficult to achieve because it requires significant buy-in from organizations and systems. And that's difficult for a small medical society or a group of physicians to achieve. When we looked at the aspect of physical health interventions, we found that while some of these interventions might be easy to implement, which would be things like educating doctors about sleep and nutrition, there was really not strong evidence that these interventions made a very big difference in physician wellness. Where we did see the biggest benefit and the most realistic ability for a medical society to intervene were in the three aspects of active self-improvement, facilitated group interventions, and emotional health interventions. And we'll go through some of the different types of steps that have been shown to be effective in these areas. For medical societies, the facilitated group intervention step is probably the most natural and simple step that uh, we can take. When I talk about facilitated group interventions, what has been studied is the opportunity for physicians to participate in what's called narrative medicine, which is just simply the chance to talk about what's going on in their lives and to reflect on what's going on often with a peer or a colleague. And in fact, studies have shown that when physicians are given protected time away to just spend with their colleagues having lunch or dinner, that they report lower levels of burnout. And it doesn't have to be a lot of time. It could be even an hour every week or every other week. So one of the things that medical societies already do is to provide the opportunity for physicians to get together through meetings and networking. And what's really important is for doctors to be able to make those personal connections. This isn't really easy right now, specifically because of COVID-19. It's really limited our ability to get together with our peers in physical presence. So one of the ways to overcome that is to provide opportunities for virtual meetings and to utilize social media to help doctors network. This is something that we've done in Southwest Florida. We created a Facebook secret private page for doctors only, and this has been a good opportunity for doctors to be able to vent and share some of the stresses that they're going through, particularly in the era of COVID-19. Other than providing opportunities for physicians to get together with each other, medical societies can also play a role in helping physicians with active self-improvement and emotional health interventions. 
And some of the ways that we can do that is to provide resources for doctors either on our website or in newsletters or email blasts. We can provide conferences or webinars on different wellness topics, specifically on uh, opportunities for self-care, both physical and emotional. And we could also consider starting a coaching program. And for Collier and Lee County, this was an area where we decided to put much of our emphasis. And there was a specific reason for this. When you look at the evidence-based interventions that have been studied, many of the most effective interventions can be provided by a physician coach or counselor. And specifically, those are mindfulness training, mind-body interventions, stress management, positive psychology, and communication training. So since we realized that having the right person in place to help doctors with each of those elements could be a crucial step to improving wellness, we decided to focus our energy on setting up a physician counseling program. Now, it's not easy to do something like this because it involves um, uh, some buy-in from the administrative staff and the physicians involved. Um, it's a little daunting to think about starting a counseling program because we may not know where to get started and we may be worried about how we're going to afford to pay for a program. And then, of course, once you get one started, you also have to figure out how you're going to get physicians to attend the program and advertise it and make it successful. Now, for us in Collier and Lee County, because we had happened to have um, two physician suicides at this time that we were contemplating creating a program, we actually had significant buy-in right away from our administrative staff and from our physician leadership. But not every medical society is going to have the realization that they need a program. So one of the important um, barriers that you may see is that many physicians or administrators may not believe that we need a physician wellness program. They may not believe that this that physician wellness is a pro is even a problem. So one of the ways to address that is to educate different people in your organization about physician burnout. Give them the data and the studies that show that physicians are burned out, they are leaving medicine or trying to, and that there are statistics showing physician depression and suicide is real. It's especially concerning because doctors in particular are good at hiding symptoms until it's too late. In the case of the physicians that we lost in our counties, we really no one, even those closest to these people, realized how much they were hurting. So that's why it's really important to set up a program so that people can get help before it gets to that point. The second aspect of developing buy-in, even if your um, members realize that it's important, they may not know whether or not a physician counseling program is really going to help and they may wonder if it's worth the investment. Well, we can help provide the evidence that shows that these programs do help. And there are three specific studies that are referenced in the CHARM uh, database that show that by providing cognitive behavioral therapy through the form of psychology, there is a decreased rate of depression and suicidal ideation, both in medical students, residents, and in practicing physicians. Once you've decided that you do want to move forward with starting a program, uh, the next barrier is just asking yourself, where do I start? It, it may seem very daunting to think about starting a brand new program. But you have to realize that you don't have to reinvent the wheel because many other organizations have created physician wellness programs. So uh, you can look to those programs as a model. And also just realize that you just start wherever you can. If you don't have the resources or the funding to start a full-blown program, even just starting with providing information or giving links to different um, counselors in the community, that's still something and that can be very beneficial. For those organizations that do want to create their own formal program, I highly recommend that you look to the LifeBridge program, which is a free toolkit. It's available at physicianwellnessprogram.org, and it gives you everything that you need step-by-step step to create a physician wellness program so you don't have to start everything from scratch. One of the biggest concerns that medical societies have about starting any programs is how they're going to pay for the program. And it is a concern, and of course, we, our medical societies, are always talking about how we're going to fund this program. We realize it's important, but it does take money because we pay a psychologist for a certain number of sessions. 
and we have to figure out how we're going to pay for that. What we've done specifically is we've had some fundraising events with 50-50 raffles. We've partnered with charitable foundations and we've actually had very good donation funding from our local hospital and from the community. You can apply for grants and you can also allow physicians to pay it forward where a doctor may want to make a donation or pay for someone else that uh, may need the program. So even if you don't have a lot of money, it may not take that much money to get started because you don't know how much involvement you're going to have. You may not have that many people taking advantage of the program in the beginning, so it may not be very costly. Over time, generally, we'll see an increase in utilization and you'll need to have more funds. But then when the word is out more and people are talking about the program, that's also when you'll get more donations. So in our case, we didn't have a lot of funding to begin our program. Uh, we had uh, enthusiasm from the group and we just we had some um, assets from the medical society from just dues. We just decided to go ahead and start the program and just figure out the funding as we went along. And that's actually been successful because as the word of mouth has increased and people are getting benefit from the program, we're able to get funding more easily for it. Of course, one of the criticisms that you'll hear from possibly administrators, but even other physicians is why should the medical society pay for physician counseling when doctors can afford to do this themselves or use their insurance? Um, there's definitely this perception that doctors have plenty of money and no financial strain. But the truth is that many doctors are under financial strain. In 2016, a study asked physicians if they were having financial problems, and they found that over 50% of physicians across the board of every specialty reported significant amount of financial strain, including debt and trouble making their overhead. So although there's this perception that doctors have plenty of money, that's not necessarily the case especially in light of COVID-19, where we're seeing doctors being furloughed and having a decrease in office visits and elective surgeries, the strain may be even greater. Doctors also, while they may have insurance, they may not want to use insurance because they're afraid of the possible stigma if it's found out that they are getting psychological help. So, uh, and then there are many physicians who actually don't have great health insurance because they have a small business themselves and because the cost of health insurance is so high in many counties. The stigma of getting psychological care is real. Um, one of the reasons is because some states actually ask physicians to report on mental health counseling or psychological issues on their licensing applications. Here in Florida, we've been making efforts to ask the Board of Medicine to change the wording on the application instead of asking if a physician has any mental health problems specifically, just asking them if their mental health problems are causing any impairment in their ability to practice medicine. So in some states, physicians are afraid to, to get counseling because if they have to, if they do it, then they're gonna to have to answer that they receive counseling and they fear that they may lose their medical license or there may be some repercussions. So one of the things that medical societies can do to help protect their physicians is to offer a program through the medical society. That way physicians don't have to use their health insurance and they would not be necessarily required to report this, especially if you emphasize that this is not a mental health diagnosis, but rather it's a physician wellness program to promote wellness and prevent problems in the future. It's also really important that the Medical Society program ensures patient confidentiality and reminds physicians that their participation is not something that's reportable for example, there are state programs that physicians are sometimes required to attend if they have problems with drugs or alcohol. Those are reportable programs, whereas the county medical society programs that we're creating are voluntary and they're not being reported to any third party. Once you've created a wellness program, the next step is to promote the program, to raise awareness of it, and importantly, to develop physician buy-in. And I'd like to review some of the barriers to those aspects. Creating awareness of your program is um, very difficult, very challenging. And in fact, studies of different physician wellness programs, even in those that have excellent funding for marketing and even financial incentives for physicians to participate, even those programs have struggled with awareness. I think the main reason is because sometimes even though 
we may have advertisements for our program all over the place, if a physician isn't specifically looking for that, their eye may just go past it and they don't even really recognize uh, the, the advertisement. Of course, once you're actually having a problem and you're looking for help, that's when um, having those ads that pop up or the notifications on the emails can be really helpful. So just realize that awareness is going to be an issue with these programs, especially in the beginning, and it's just going to be important to continue to uh, drive home the message that the program is available and make it as easy as possible for physicians to find out information about the program. You can do that by listing information on your website, sending out a regular newsletter, and promoting it on social media. We had a lot of benefit this year by promoting our wellness program in the form of an annual mental health wellness checkup. So we told physicians, hey, if it's been a while since you've had a checkup, why don't you have a mental health checkup just to see if there's anything you could do better to improve your wellness? And we had a lot of members participate uh, based on that promotion. You should also consider talking to organizations where healthcare, uh, where physicians are working. Um, we also marketed towards our local media and we had several articles published in our local newspapers to promote uh, the program. And you can also talk to the groups like spouses of physicians so that the spouse can remind the physician about the program if they see that their loved one needs some help. Um, wherever physicians are, try to get the message out about the wellness program, whether it's at a meeting or a social event. And one of the most important ways to, ra ways to raise awareness is through the use of physician champions, because word of mouth, uh, especially from peers and colleagues, seems to be one of the biggest ways to promote the program. Many of our participants in our physician wellness program found out about it because a colleague told them, hey, we have this program and I think you might benefit. So getting a few physicians, especially that are in the community, to talk up the program can really help uh, raise awareness. The next step is, uh, besides awareness, is to gain physician buy-in. And that can be a little bit difficult because doctors may have some intrinsic barriers to getting help. Um, one of the issues that doctors have is that we sometimes have certain personality traits that make it harder for us to accept help. We often have a fear of failure or not being perfect, and perfectionism is often something that keeps us from you know, getting better because if we feel like if we can't be perfect at something, why even bother doing it? And doctors also tend to rely upon themselves and they see relying on others sometimes as a form of weakness, and that may make it difficult for them to accept um, participating in a program. So one of the ways, the strategies that we can overcome those physician uh, personality traits is to focus on emphasizing the program rather than that the physician has a problem, but that you can utilize the service to improve your ability to care for patients, to make your practice more efficient, and just to really be the best doctor that you can be. It's also important for medical society executives to realize that doctors, uh, are, they come through a, a program, a training, that has a certain culture that emphasizes independence, not complaining, keeping your feelings inside. This is starting to change a little bit now, but it, it really is still present. So uh, here, Dr. House tells the doctors under him, I'm going to write you a prescription and it's called suck it up. And that is something that doctors do here in our training. So we have to overcome that, uh, what's been drilled into our heads, which is that you know getting help is weak. So instead, we need to tell doctors that we just need to do for ourselves the exact same thing that we would recommend to our patients. We would never tell our patients to suck it up. We would tell them to get help. So we owe it to ourselves to get the same care that we would prescribe to our patients. Many doctors also, even though they're physicians and they've been through medical school, they don't really understand fully what psychology is. In fact, our psychologist at our program says that many of the physicians that come to him say, um, well, you know, I, I know I'm going to, I don't need to talk to somebody, but I don't need medication. And they don't realize that psychiatry, which is where we typically see medication prescriptions, and psychology, which is more talk therapy, that they're different um, totally different professions. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy is what psychologists do, and it's really helping us to change our thinking, identify our feelings, change our thinking about our feelings, and that in turn 
helps us to change our behavior. And we can explain to physicians that cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to work for many different emotional health issues. We also need to remind doctors that their problems don't need to be work-related in order to get help through our physician wellness program. Uh, our psychologist says that many doctors come in and say, well, I probably shouldn't be here through this program because my problems are not due to my work, they're due to my family or a marital issue. But the truth is that any type of emotional problem can impact your work function and therefore is a perfect reason to go to a psychologist and take advantage of a physician wellness program. Many doctors report just being way too busy to take advantage of these programs. So what we've done is we've tried to make it as easy as possible to reach our program. We have a special telephone number that goes directly to the psychologist. It's a private number so that the doctors don't have to call an office and speak to a secretary. We've also provided sessions outside of work hours, either early in the morning or in the evening. And then we've tried to ensure that our program is easy to access so we have different locations in different parts of the county. A lot of doctors just sort of, especially when they're really burned out, feel like, what's the point? There's just, there's no way that this is gonna help me because the system is broken and there's nothing that can be done. And we acknowledge that the system is broken in a lot of ways and that organizational and systemic change is really difficult. However, we can learn to respond to that system in a more positive way that can help our emotional health. Uh, by working with a psychologist or counselor, we can learn how to set boundaries and say no. We can learn offloading techniques or we can even consider alternatives to a system that we may perceive as being broken beyond repair. Maybe we need to practice a different type of medicine or consider an alternative practice style. This is all something that a, a good psychologist or physician coach can help you achieve. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic created a new barrier to our physician wellness program, especially when our state was shut down. Uh, we were able to transition to virtual visits via a web-based program for our physicians, although I'll note that that was a barrier as well because many physicians were not comfortable with the idea of doing a virtual visit and wanted to wait to have a face-to-face -face visit. But those that did try the virtual visit found that it really wasn't so bad once they tried it. Uh, also, you may find that you need to expand the program because as more doctors are having financial struggles, they may uh, have an increased need for counseling or they may have a decreased ability to pay for it themselves. And then the third issue that we found with COVID-19 is we've noticed a delayed impact of the pandemic on our utilization. We thought we would see a big surge in the beginning, but actually there was a downtick in services and then a delayed increase. So just in the last month or two, we've seen a surge in utilization. And we expect that to, to continue as the after effects of the pandemic and the reality sort of sets in almost a post-traumatic type of experience for many physicians. Thank you for caring about physicians and for doing what you do to help us to take care of our patients. For more information, please visit my website or check out my book that I co-wrote with psychologist Stephen Cohen uh, on physician wellness. Thank you.